بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى ولقد أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه إني لكم نذير مبين ألا تعبدوا إلا الله إني أخاف عليكم عذاب يوم أليم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا مولانا محمد كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد أفضل سلواته رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني صدق الله العظيم Tonight, inshallah, as we resume our weekly tafsir sessions, we are picking up from where we left off before the month of Ramadan. Before the month of Ramadan, we had started the tafsir of Surah Hud, and we had reached up to verse 25 of this chapter. And now starting from verse 25, there will be stories of the Prophets and their people. Surah Hud is a Makki Surah. It was revealed before the migration of Rasulullah to Medina. And it has many special characters, many special features. And one of the special features that this Surah has, it has the stories of many Prophets and their people and we also, we also remember these prophets and their people as ancient nations because they are all old nations. The last one that will be mentioned here will be the story of Musa السلام, and his people Fir'aun very briefly. And the time distance between us and them, the, the time of Musa السلام, is almost 35 100 to 3800 years so it's a, it's a long long time difference between our time and the time of Musa salam. and between the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and Musa salam, we can see there are at least uh, over, at least 2000 years or more in, in terms of time uh, distance so uh, that will be the most recent of the stories in time that we will uh, read in this chapter. We will begin with the story of Nuh salam, and Nuh salam is known as uh, Abu al-Bashar al-Thani, the second father of humanity. And the fir first father of humanity is Adam salam because he is the father of all human beings. But Nuh salam is known as Abu al-Bashar al-Thani uh, the second father of humanity for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons why he's known as the second father of humanity is because from the time of Nuh salam, after the great uh, deluge, after the great flood, uh, everything uh, perished. Everything got destroyed. All the life from the face of this earth vanished during that time. So everything that came into existence after that time is from Adam, from Nuh salam and whoever was left with him. In that sense, he's known as Abu al-Bashar al-Thani, the second father of humanity. Uh, so his time, his time place is, is very, very uh, distant from our time. So he is very far from us in terms of the placement of time and if we were to make a rough estimate, I would say maybe 8,000 years, 7,000 years, something like that. That's when Nuh salam lived on the face of this earth. And the scholars have said uh, that Nuh salam lived one of the longest lifespans on the face of this earth. In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا That we sent Nuh to his people and he stayed with them 
for 950 years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this way that He stayed with them for a thousand years minus 50, which is 950 years. So that is how long He stayed with His people. But there is an addition to that. The scholars say that this number that Allah has mentioned, the 950 years, is the number of years that He gave da'wah to His people. This is not His life. And they say that He was given prophethood. He became the Prophet of Allah when He was 40 years old. So now add 40 to 950. That becomes 990. And then after the flood, he stayed another 60 years. So that takes his life to 1050 years. So that's his actual lifespan that the scholars say. There are certain other opinions as well. But the most trusted among all those is this opinion that his total life on the face of this earth was 1050 years. 40 years before he became the Prophet of Allah and 60 years after everything got destroyed and after everything resettled and restarted from the time of Nuh So the most detailed account of the story of Nuh and his people is given in this surah, in Surah Hud. Uh, and there, there are longer verses and many verses. There's also a chapter dedicated to the story of Nuh which is called Surah to Nuh in, in the second last juz of the Quran. But compared to this uh, detailed description that is given here in Surah Hud, that is not the most detailed account. That too has a lot of details, but not the most detailed account. The most detailed account of the story of Nuh is here, before, he, before the flood, during the flood, and after the flood. That is mentioned over here. So let's start without any further delay, inshallah. What fascinates me about the stories that are mentioned in the Quran, the most fascinating aspect for me personally is the fact that these stories are narrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what amazes me. That what fascinates me. Story in itself is a very amusing thing for human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicated a large portion of the Quran in stories. So the stories of the people, the stories of the prophets, the story, uh, stories of other things are mentioned in the Quran because story is one thing that really, really draws our attention very quickly and we become very attentive to listening to the story. That's why successful politicians, they start telling their story. This is the story of my life. And if it's an appealing story, if it's an attractive story, that immediately makes its, its place in the hearts of the people and people start connecting with that person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the stories of the previous people and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a variety of reasons. But one of the reasons why we have those stories is so we can make this personal connection between their time, their experience, and our time, and our experience. Because as human species, Things don't really change. Yes, we have come uh, very far in terms of technology. We have advanced technology and we have advanced means of transportation and other uh, technological advances in terms of humanity and also science and, and, and those aspects. But as a human, uh, as a species, human beings as a species, we are still the same thing. We still have the eyes to see, we still have the ears to, uh, to listen, we still have the, the nose to smell, we still have the tongue to taste, and we feel the same way, the, 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 the desires and all of that is still the same as the people in earlier times had. So our nature as human beings has not changed. And this is why there is an important connection between the story of our time and the stories of other people. So we can connect with them and we can learn from their experiences, we can learn from their lessons, we can learn from their examples and we can make use of those examples in our stories, in our lives. So we can live a successful life. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, look, those people who obeyed Allah and obeyed their Prophet, 
they were successful in that life and they are definitely successful in the hereafter. And so if we do the same, if we also obey Allah and obey His Prophet, obey His Messenger, we will also be successful in this world and definitely in the hereafter. There's no doubt about that. But often, too often, for many individuals, the lesson comes too late. Because they don't see the results right away and they don't often see the results in their own experience and in their own life. So they often ignore it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about the responses of kuffar. When kuffar were told about the stories of the previous people and previous prophets, this is what they would say. In hadha illa asatirul awwali. These are the legends of the old people. These are the legends of the ancient people. So don't give us those legends. Don't tell us those stories. We don't believe in them. Because we don't find that connection in our own life. We don't connect that to that. So that, that is what obscures them. And that is what hinders them from taking the lesson and implementing in their, in their own life. So for us, the opportunity is here, alhamdulillah. Allah has given us the opportunity in this Quran through the examples and through the stories of the prophets that look, those who followed the prophets were successful and those who did not, they, they lost in this life and they definitely lost in the hereafter. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُّبِينٌ And we sent Nuh to his people with this message that I am an, a clear and open warner to you. I have come to you with an open message, with an open warning, with a clear warning. أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ That you must not worship anyone other than Allah. Worship Allah alone. Because the people of Nuh السلام, they started worshipping the uh, idols. Uh, which are mentioned in Surah Nuh as well. Yaguth, Ya'uq, Nasr, Wud, Suwa. These are the five idols that the people of Nuh alayhi were worshipping. So Nuh alayhi said to them, Allah ta'abudu illallah. Do not worship anyone other than Allah. It is Allah alone who is worthy of worship. Inni akhafu alaykum adaba yawmin alim. And the warning was that, I am afraid for you of a, of a day of painful punishment. That if you don't stop worshipping these idols, and if you don't stop, stop disobeying Allah, if you don't stop disobeying the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I am afraid that the day of painful punishment will come on you. That was the wa'id, that was the threat, that, uh, that was the warning that Nuh presented to his people. So what was the response? of his people, he's, they said to Nuh السلام, So the chiefs of the disbelievers among the people of Nuh السلام, said to him, Ma naraka illa basharan mithlana. We only see you as a human being like us. And if you are just like us, then why should we follow you? And why should we listen to you? Why shouldn't we listen to ourselves? And we do not see, we do not see except those have followed you, those who are the meanest of us, those who are the lowest of us, the poor, the needy, the beggar, those are the ones who have followed you and believed in you. And they have no deep judgment. They have no intellect. They are quick to, uh, to follow. They are quick to believe. And they don't, they don't really reflect. They are not intelligent people. And we do not see in you any merit above us. In fact, we think you are liars. So in this they presented two main objections to Nuh in his message. They said, we see that you are a human being like us. And if you are a human being just like us, then you have no special status above us and we should not follow you. 
And Nuh was not, a, uh, was not a king, was not a president, was not a ruler. Nuh was just the prophet of Allah. So these people, if they had seen an authority in Nuh in, uh, in form of him being the ruler, him being the king, him being the leader in that sense, then they would have followed Nuh because of that authority and because of the power of enforcement. So for, for, for some people, that is what clicks with them. That if you have power over them, if you can really enforce on them what you believe, then they will believe in you. Otherwise, they think that uh, you have no credential. So the first objection they, they had to Nuh they said, you're a human being just like us, and therefore we do not need to follow you. We do not need to listen to you. And the second objection they raised, they said, and as far as those people who have believed in you, who have followed you, those are the, old, those are the ones who are the meanest of us, who are the lowest of us, those who have no dignity, those who have no honor in our eyes, meaning that they're not wealthy, they're not rich, they're not people of status, they're not people of, uh, uh, of great, uh, uh, great fame and popularity among us. Therefore, that is another reason why we should not follow you. And these are the similar objections that the Kuffar of Makkah would raise to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi as well. They would say to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you are just a human being like us. And they would also say that look, who are the people who follow you? Who are the people who surround you? People like Na'udhu Billah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who was a poor person, people like Bilal of Habshi radiallahu an, or other people, other Sahaba who were poor, who had nothing, no power. <laughs> so the Kuffar of Makkah would come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and say, look, this is the reason why we cannot be with you. We cannot associate ourselves with you because you're always crowded, you're, all, you're always surrounded by these people. And we really look down upon these people. So they said, we do not see any any merit uh, for you above us, and we in fact think you are liars. قال يا قوم رأيتم إن كنت على بينة من ربي وآتاني رحمة من عندي فعميت عليكم أن أنزلكموها وأنتم لها كارهون. نوح عليه السلام said to them, "O oh my people, do you see if I have the clear proof from my Lord?" And my Lord has given me mercy from His grace. And you have been obscured from that. You cannot see that. You cannot accept the fact that Allah has uh, given me His mercy. Allah has made me His prophet. And Allah has given me the clear proof to present to you that I'm the prophet of Allah. But you don't see it. You have become blind. You have made to, be, you have made to not see that. Are we going to compel you to accept it when you are averse to it? No. The answer is that no. We're not going to force you. This is the beauty of the true religion. The true religion is never forced upon people. People accept it willingly. Islam has never been forced upon anyone in the history of Islam. Islam has never compelled anyone to accept it or reject it. So the notion that, in, that you can tell someone either accept Islam or you be killed is totally, is totally against the, the basics of Islam. Islam and other religions, other divine religions, whether it is Judaism or Christianity or the religion of Nuh or Ibrahim or uh, Yaqub alayhi salam or Yusuf alayhi salam the true religion has never been forced upon people people see it understand it and then their hearts open to it and then they accept it that has been the reality of true religion throughout the history of mankind so Nuh alayhi salam said so are we going to compel you to accept it when you are averse to it no when you are ready to accept it, you will accept it. But if you will never be ready, we're not going to force it upon you. And then 
Nuh went further. He said, oh my people, I do not even ask you of any monetary compensation, any money. I do not ask you to pay my salary. I do not ask you to give me compensation for this da'wah that I bring to you for all the work day and night. I do it for your benefit. I do not ask you in return to pay me anything. No. In adriya illa ala Allah. My reward and my compensation is upon Allah. Allah will give me that reward and Allah will give me that compensation. وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الَّذِينَ amanu. And as far as those people are concerned who believe in me and who believe in Allah and you think they are the meanest and they are the lowest of all of you, I'm not going to push them away at your request. They, 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 they were saying this to Nuh salam, so Nuh salam can push them away and make room for the rich ones. Nuh salam said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to push away those who believe. They are going to meet with their Lord. But I see you that you are behaving ignorantly. You people are the fools. You people are the ignorant ones. So you should try to understand what's going on. And oh my people, tell me who will help me from Allah if I push them away. If I do start shutting my doors on these people who believe in Allah and I start shutting my doors on them just because they are poor and they are worthless in your eyes, so when Allah will question me on the day of judgment and when Allah will hold me accountable for that, who will come to save me? Is any one of you will come to save me? Why don't you understand? No one will come to save me on that day. In this verse, Nuh gives answers to each and every single one of their objections. He said, I never told you that I have the treasures from Allah, that I have control over the treasures of Allah. Therefore, I, I will have gold and silver and, and all the treasures of this world. No, I never told you. So you are just assuming that because I'm the Prophet of Allah and because I'm the Messenger of Allah, so I will have control over the treasures of Allah so I can make all of you rich. No, I never told you that I have any treasures of Allah. And I do not know any, any, any knowledge of unseen. I do not have it. I don't know what, what is going on, uh, what is going to happen tomorrow, what is going to happen with you, what is going to happen with your family. That is all up to Allah. Only Allah has the knowledge of unseen. And I never say to you that I'm an angel. I never told you I'm an angel. I told you I'm a human being. So your objection that you are a human being like us is not really an objection. I never told you I'm an angel. I'm a human being and I'm a prophet of Allah. And I will not say to those who are meanest in your eyes that Allah will never give them any good. I will never say to them, Allah will give them good. Allah is the one who knows best what is in their hearts. If I do any of this, then I sure be among those who do wrong. Now the, the people of Nuh السلام, they said to him, O oh, Nuh, you have disputed us and you have prolonged that dispute with us. What was the dispute? The dispute was that Nuh would call them towards the worship of Allah. They would say no. Nuh would call them to believe in the day of judgment. They would say no. Nuh would, would call them to not worship the idols. They would say no. So this was a dispute. And this dispute continued for a very long time. It had been 950 years that this dispute continued between Nuh and his people. So they came to him and they said, Oh Nuh, you have been disputing with us and now it's been too long that you have been disputing with us. So now bring to us what you have been threatening us with. 
you would you were saying that uh, you uh, you will bring the punishment of Allah and Allah will punish it with with, with painful chastisement so bring it to us and Nuh salam said to them qala innama ya'tikum billah he said it is Allah who will bring that to you i'm not in control I'm not the one who will bring the punishment to you. It is Allah who will deliver that punishment to you. It is Allah who will bring that punishment to you. If he wants to. Insha'Allah. If he wants to. Again, this is not something that is in my control. But when the punishment of Allah will come, you will not be able to escape. You will not be able to outrun from the punishment of Allah. وَلَا يَنْفَعُكُمْ نُسْحِي إِنْ أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَنْصَحَ لَكُمْ and then Nuh salam said, and my advice will not benefit you. Even if I wish to give you good counsel, if Allah's will is to keep you astray, if, Allah, if Allah's will is that you stay in this error, you stay in this state of misguidance, then you will not change. You will not move out of that. Even if I wish to, because it is not my plan that works, it is Allah's plan that works. It is not my wish that is fulfilled, it is the wish of Allah that is fulfilled. That always supersedes everything else. Huwa Rabbukum. He is your Lord. Wa ilayhi turja'oon. And to him you shall return. Nuh salam said these words. After this long battle with his people, imagine... A battle that did not just last for a few years, not for even 50 years, not even for a whole century, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine. It lasted for 950 years. A struggle, a tension, a dispute, a battle between Haq and Batul between Nuh and his people. And if I tell you what happened to Nuh in those years, you would not be able to hold your tears. We get a glimpse of that from the verses of Surah Nuh in the second last juz, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of what, what happened to Nuh How he he did not spare any effort to deliver the, the message in every way possible. Every day, every night, daytime, nighttime, morning, evening, privately, publicly, and in a good way, in a bad way, in a glad tiding, in a in a warning, in every single way, Nuh salam made the effort. He gave the out. It was not fruitful. It did not produce much result. And at the end, Nuh salam, it is mentioned that his people would beat him up. They would beat him up so badly, he would start bleeding, and then they would leave him on the road and run away. And one incident, in one incident, Nuh salam was, was walking, on the side of the street and there was an old man who was who was leaning on the shoulders of his young child and as they as they they passed by Nuh salam, the old man even though he cannot walk at this point but he stopped and he told his son look my dear son no matter what happens to you don't ever listen to this man. And imagine this man was not old because he was 80 years old or, or, or 90 years old. This man was old because he was probably 500 or 600 years old or maybe 800 years old. Those were the average lifespans at that time. So this old man said to his young child, no matter what happens to you, don't ever listen to this man. Because this man is a fool, this man is ignorant, and this man has never brought any good to the community. Now, Nuh heard all of that and he was deeply hurt. 
And this was not the end. The son said to his father, oh, my father, why shouldn't I go and beat him up right now? And the father said, yes, go ahead. So the son went and started beating up Nuh salam, and he took a stone and threw at the head of Nuh salam. And Nuh salam, uh, developed the wound in his head. He fell down. He was bleeding. And he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallah, if there is some good left in these people, then deliver that good. Give, if there is some guidance left for these people, then give them that guidance. But if there's no good left in these people, then you are the best of all judges. Send your judgment. It has been too long, oh Allah. And that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh alayhi salam. So uh, uh, if there's one ayah here that is, that is not part of the story. That is connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Allah says, Am yaqulun aftara? Do they say that he has fabricated this Quran, forged this Quran? Qul in iftaraituhu. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if I did forge this Quran, fa'aliya ajrami, then the crime of forging is my responsibility. I'm, whole, I'm accountable for that. Wa ana bariyum min ma tujrimun. But at the same time, I am free from what you do as a crime. I'm free from your crimes. I have nothing to do. I disassociate myself from your crimes. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh alayhi salam, وَأُوحِيَ إِلَىٰ نُوحٍ أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنْ And it was revealed to Nuh alayhi salam that no one will believe from your people except those who have already believed. فَلَا تَبْدَ إِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ So, O oh, Nuh alayhi salam, O oh, Nuh, do not be distressed by what they have been doing. Don't take distress. You just relax and, and be at peace. Because now, the door of Iman has closed for these people. The door of guidance has closed for these people. Only those who have already believed who have already entered the fold of Islam, those will remain believers, rest of them will die as kafir. So next instruction for Nuh alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاسْمَعِلْ قُلْقُ Nuh, start constructing the ark. بِأَعْيُنِنَا In front of our eyes. Start constructing the ark before our eyes. وَوَحْيِنَا and with our inspiration, with our instructions, وَلَا تُخَاطِبْنِي فِي الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا And O Nuh, do not address me concerning those who have wronged. Because if you ask me now to forgive them or to turn to them in mercy, it's too late. Because Allah has already decided in His infinite wisdom that the door of mercy, the door of rahmah, the door of repentance has already closed for these people. There is no more forgiveness for these people. There is no more mercy for these people. There is no pardon for these people. So don't ask me either. Because I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give your prayer in that regard. So do not address me concerning the wrongdoers. The wrongdoers will die as wrongdoers and they will face the punishment. Now it has been decreed. إِنَّهُمْ مُغْرَقُونَ They will all be drowned. وَيَسْنَعُوا الْفُلْقُ So as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Nuh alayhi salam to start constructing the ark, Nuh alayhi salam who had never constructed an ark, this was the first time now he started constructing the ark. And obviously he was not alone constructing that ark. There were those few believers who were with him. They were also helping him in constructing that ark. It was a huge ark. It was not a small boat. But it was a massive ark that Nuh was building by the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was Allah who was guiding Nuh to build that ark where to, where to put uh, nails and where to uh, put the first level and the second level. And all the instructions were given 
The blueprint was given to Nuh by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, this ark was so special that the blueprint of this ark came directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Nuh So Nuh started constructing the ark. Every time a group of his people would pass by, they would start make fun of Nuh They would start laughing at him, start saying, Oh look, this, this is the fool who's building an ark in the middle of the desert. And if you all remember, Nuh was somewhere in Iraq, in the land of Iraq, the old Iraq, between Dajla and Furat, the Mesopotamia. And the, the ocean was not even, even near that land. So those people, when they would pass by Nuh and they would observe him constructing an ark, which is only good in the ocean, which is only good in large bodies of water. The ark was not even good in, in Dajla or Furat in the river. The ark is only good in the ocean. So they would start making fun of him. And Nuh in response, he would say, In tasharu minna fa inna nasharu minkum kama tasharun. As if you are making fun of us, we will be making fun of you. Today, you get to laugh at us. Tomorrow, we will be laughing at you. Tomorrow, we will find out who's really being mocked and who's really at loss. Soon, you will know to whom the disgraceful punishment will come. And upon whom will fall the lasting torment. This lasted until the command of Allah. Allah says, until our command came. So Nuh kept on building the ark. Allah knows best how long it took for him to build that ark. But finally, when the construction was done, then Nuh waited for the command of Allah to come. And then now Allah says, until our command came, وَفَارَتْتَ nur, And the oven began gushing forth with water. قُلْ نَحْمِلْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلٍ This was the very first sign of the beginning of Ada. Was, what was the first sign? The first sign was not the rain. The first sign, there was, a, there was an oven, a ground oven, in, in, uh, in the vicinity of Nuh So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that when you start seeing water coming forth from that oven as a spring, that is the sign that the adab of Allah has come. And the next instruction, قُلْ نَحْمِلْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ We said to Nuh we said to Nuh that load upon the ship of each creature two mates. All the living creatures that were there at that time, in the, in the time of Nuh the birds, the reptiles, and the animals from the animal kingdom, all of those species, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, take one pair of each. So from the lions, one lion, male lion, and the lioness, from the tigers, from the cheetahs, from the zebras, from the deer, from elephant, from each species, Allah subhanahu wa told him, take a pair, a mate, a male and a female. So from birds too, Nuh did the same thing. So Nuh loaded a pair of each living creature that existed at that time onto the ark that he built. Now imagine how massive was that ark that you had lions in there, dogs in there, wolves in there, and cheetahs in there, elephants in there, birds in there, snakes in there, all of these things that are alive today, and a crocodile too. <laughs> Even though the crocodile could have survived in the water too. Hmm? Elephant too, yes. You can just imagine. So, that's the, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to take 
a pair of each species onto that uh, ark with him and your family and those who believe in you. So the believers, the family of Nuh السلام, and from the family of Nuh السلام, there was one exception. Except the one upon whom the word has already been decreed. So the son of Nuh السلام, was the one who was exempt from this. He was not coming onto the boat, onto the ark, and Nuh السلام, even though he tried, but the son did not come. And those who believed with Nuh السلام, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were very few. Some say there were 80 people. That's it. So in 950 years, the number of people who believed in Nuh السلام, were 80. So that brings us to not even one person in 100 years. If there was one person in, uh, uh, not even one person in, uh, not 100 years, 10? Yes. So not even one person in 10 years. Less than that. It's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide people and to let people stay in their error. وَقَالَ الْكَبُوا فِيهَا So Nuh Islam said to the people, the believers, he said to them, board the ark. بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا In the name of Allah is the course of this ark and the resting of this ark. When it rests, it will rest in the name of Allah. When it moves, it will move in the name of Allah. It is only the name of Allah that will keep the, the ark afloat and that will make the ark rest. So everything is in the name of Allah. That's why we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna Rabbi laghafur ar-Rahim. Surely my Lord is most forgiving and most merciful. Wa hiya tajri bihim bi mawjin kal jibal. And the ark, the ark floated with them, the, the passengers, the believers, on the waves like mountains. The waves were so, so high and massive that they look like mountains, huge mountains. And Nuh called out his son. And the son had been separated. The son was apart. He was not on the ark and he was uh, on the distance. So Nuh called him, O son, come board with us on this ark. The son said, the, uh, and Nuh Islam told him, do not be with those who are disbelievers. And the son said, Sa'awi ila jabalin ya'asimuni min al-ma. I will take shelter on a mountain that will protect me from this water. Some thought that if I go higher and higher, the water will not reach there. The water will not reach the peak of the mountain, the summit of the mountain. Therefore, I will go up to the summit of the mountain and I will be saved from this water, from this flood. Nuh knew the reality. Nuh said to him, Qal, la min illa rahim. Today, there is no savior from the decree of Allah except the one who is being shown mercy by Allah. If Allah will show mercy to someone, that person alone will be saved. But no one else will be saved. This is the punishment of Allah. And a wave came in between the ark and the sun of Nuh السلام, And then the wave was higher than the mountain. So the sun got taken in the, into the flood. And he drowned. وَقِيلَ يَا أَرْضُ And the word went forth. O earth, swallow up the water. Ya ardu bla'i ma'aki. O earth, swallow up your water. Wa ya sama'u akhli'i. And O sky, withhold your rain. Wa ghiz al ma'a. Wa khudhi al amr. Wa stawat ala al judi. Wa khila bu'dan lil qawm al zalimin. And the water abated. And the matter was ended, fulfilled. The ark rested on Mount Judy, and the word went forth, away with those who do wrong. 
beautiful verse of this surah and the story of Nuh alayhi salam. So the flood was, was different and unique in every single aspect. When the flood started, as I said, the, the water started coming from the ground too. And then from above, from the sky, the clouds came and it started raining. So the rain would not stop from the top and the water would not stop coming out from the ground. So from both sides, from top and bottom, the water started filling the space until it reached higher than the mountains. The mountains became underwater and no place was left that was dry. Now, there are two opinions regarding this great flood and this deluge of the time of Nuh salam. One opinion suggests that this flood covered the entire globe of earth. So there was no place left dry on the face of this earth. America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Middle East, all parts of this earth. First of all, the dry part of the earth is already less than one third of the land, less than one, one third of the planet. So whatever was a dry at that time, this flood made that wet as well. So that's one opinion, that every dry place on earth became wet at that time, as a result of that flood. The other opinion is that that flood did not cover the entire earth. Instead, it covered those parts of the earth where there were human populations. And human population at that time only existed in the Middle East, in that Mesopotamia, in, in the Iraq land and Hejaz, and maybe towards Jerusalem and those places. But the human population did not go into Africa, did not go into Europe, and definitely not America. So they say that since this was the target of that punishment, this part of the land, this part of the earth, which was inhabited by the human beings, those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only caused that much of the land to be flooded. Rest of it remained as is. And the other opinion is that no, it went everywhere. And that's why they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Nuh alayhi salam to save uh, one pair from each species. Because everything was going to get destroyed. There's evidence on both sides. I stay neutral, I say Wallahu A'lam, which is the best answer. I say Allah knows best whether the, the flood covered the entire globe, entire uh, planet, or it covered just that part of the earth where there was human population at that time. Oh, Allah knows best. Uh, I do not get into the argument whether this is right or that is right, this is wrong or that is wrong. But when the matter was, was fulfilled, when those people who were, who were uh, targeted to be destroyed in that adab of Allah, when they all died, when they all perished, the matter was fulfilled. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the earth to start swallowing the water. The earth miraculously began swallowing the water. It was all the water that had come on earth and those parts of the earth that, that were supposed to come up dry afterwards, they started becoming dry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the, the sky, commanded the sky to withhold